Okay then, for our exercise in this course, we will ask you to configure a content delivery network, encode and upload some media, publish that media, create a PowerShell workflow, author a runbook, and publish the runbook. Now, not all of these tasks are related to each other, so it's just a review, of course, of some of the things that you've completed earlier. But as per usual, we'll uh, invite you to pause the recording at this point and uh, take a shot at setting these up. And then you can come back and compare what you have to what I will configure in Azure and see how they match up. So we will see you shortly. Okay, so we'll get started with the uh, content delivery network. Now, there's not very much to configure here. The only thing that you have to have ahead of time is something that the content delivery network points to, if you will, or what's known as the endpoint. And we'll see in a moment what those are. So we'll just uh, select our content delivery network here and choose the option to create an endpoint. And you can see what we need is an origin domain. In other words, what are we directing our users to? So here you see are your choices. It has to be something like a storage account or a cloud service, or if you have them set up uh, some kind of web app, something along those lines. Because obviously we are looking to share some kind of information with our users. So we're simply pointing them to something that stores that type of content. So I'm just gonna choose my, uh, my blob storage account here and simply click on create. And that sets up the endpoint. You can see there's very little to it. It has successfully created already. Uh, and basically that's it in terms of setting up the delivery network. Now, of course, it's just a matter of making sure that whatever content we want to share is available in that storage account. So let's uh, proceed then with looking at encoding and uploading media. Okay, so media services begins with having a media services account, which you can see I don't have currently, but we can just select the option here to create a media services account. And quick create is the only option here. So we'll just call this Aaron test media and see if that resolves and that is unavailable so let's just put some numbers in here to make sure this will resolve and we can then just choose our region and anything there of course is fine and then under the storage account you can either choose to create a new one or of course you can just go with one of your existing ones so we'll just go ahead and choose my existing storage account click on create media service and that will go ahead and create that. Now that will take a moment or two, so we'll pause and resume once that completes creating. Okay, so now that we have our media account, then uh, of course what we need to do is to upload content to that account. So we can just go to our content page and choose to upload the content. And of course we can browse for either a local file or something that is already in a storage account. And I just have a small sample file on my desktop that I'll use right there. And we'll simply give this a name, of course. Uh, and if you wanna just leave it as is, that's perfectly fine, but you could rename it to something else. But source gets tagged on so that you know this is the original. I'll just leave it as is and click on OK. And that's just gonna go ahead and upload that content. And we'll just check back quickly uh, once that completes, which, which uh, looks like it has already. Okay, so if we go to and uh, refresh our content page here, we should see that it is now available. And there we go. So with respect then to encoding, you have a couple of choices here. There's an encoding page, uh, but this is more so the configurations in terms of the performance for encoding so that how many tasks can be undertaken simultaneously when you are setting processing and encoding options. So you can see that this is all about capacity here. Uh, so there's nothing with respect to changing the available encoders here, but you can set up how much performance is dedicated to processing your content. So from there, on the content page, we will see the process option. So here is where you can choose 
different types of encoders and processing options, different quality settings, of course, for anything that you might want to change about that type of uh, of content. And uh, do take note, of course, the streaming versus the download. What is it you want your users to be able to do with this content? Just simply view it through streaming or download it. So I'll just leave the defaults there. And again, the output content name. So we can just choose OK there. And that will, in fact, go ahead and apply those processing options to that video. And then once that has been completed, so let's just refresh this again. We should see two options now, the original source and the new one. Uh, there we go. Publishing then is simply a matter of selecting whichever one it is you want to be available. Uh, and choosing the option to publish it. As you can see currently, uh, they are not published. So we can select uh, whichever one we want to make available, and there is our publish option there. So we can just say yes, and that can be anything, the original source, the processed one, whatever you want to do. So from that point, we'll take a quick look now at creating uh, PowerShell workflows and authoring and publishing runbooks. So for runbook creation, uh, what you need to have, first of all, is an automation account. So we can see here that we have gone to the automation page, and I've just quickly created an account. You can do that simply by clicking on Create. Uh, you simply have to give it a name and a region, and that's it. That's all that's required. Once that's created, you can just select the account. And there you see is your option for runbooks. And in terms of creating runbooks, you have two choices. Uh, you can add a new one right from here. And this basically allows you to either go with a quick create option, which you can simply give a name for and then edit it after the fact, or you can choose from a gallery. And the gallery has predefined runbooks uh, specifically designed to perform certain tasks. So again, just simply choose whatever it is that you want. Uh, or of course, you can also just import an existing PowerShell script. There you see is the import option. You can just browse for your file. I have a script right there that I used previously. I can choose that choose OK, and that will open that up or import it, I should say, uh, as a runbook. And then if I need to, I can edit that runbook as well. I can make changes to whatever has to be done to this particular runbook, and then I can configure it, schedule it, test it, and of course, finally publish it when it's completed by just going through all of those options there. But all you have to do is simply import the runbook or create them from either the gallery or from scratch. And then it's just a matter of setting your preferred options on those runbooks as uh, with respect to uh, what they do, of course, and when they run and your publishing options, which again can be set just by selecting the runbook itself and going to your options there. And that's how you set up your automation service.